Hey everyone, welcome to part 3 of this Puyo tutorial series. In this video, we'll be discussing a way to build chains in a cleaner and more consistent manner using different patterns, which we will call fixed forms. The one we'll be tackling this time is stairs. Before we get into this, let's quickly revise the blocking method. Last time, we noted that you can block vertically and horizontally. However, what remained constant was the fact that we made sure to make groups of three and only had to place one key Puyo. We can change this up though, and a good way to visualize it is with horizontal blocking, or formerly known as stairs shape. First, let's consider the most familiar example. Say we have this group of three greens, which we'll call the base, and we want to extend it using the blocking method. The blocking method's main principle is to set up a Puyo such that it is blocked from another group of Puyos to cause it to clear later. Because the green Puyos are stacked vertically, and we want to put the key Puyo somewhere in the column to the left of it, we'll have to put it like this. If we were to put it somewhere lower in this column, it would already connect to one of our three greens, and thus we would have to place it higher. As we increase the height, we will reach this point, where it is in the most direct position in terms of height. You may notice that you could even place it higher, but we'll discuss this later. So, after having determined the necessary position of the key Puyo, we can then fill out the space beneath it, completing the trigger by adding reds underneath. Here's the trick though, what if we don't want to limit ourselves by having to create a full group of three every time we want to add a link? Consider this image. Here we've only set up a group of two on the right, and as before, we want to use the blocking method to make a chain using the column to the left of it. As you can see, when we apply the same logic as before, this time since the base is lower, the minimal height position of our key Puyo will also be lower. Specifically, it's this position. However, since there will only be three greens connected after the key Puyo falls into place, this won't yet clear. What we can do here though, is add another green on top of our newly acquired key Puyo. All that's left is to complete the reds. As you can see, it'll work the same way as when we had made the base a group of three. This also works the same if your base is a group of one. The important thing to keep track of is how many Puyos we're missing. In this case, we only have two greens, so we need two more. We can add those on top of the red, like this. And then if we complete the trigger, we can see that it works the same as the previous examples. Anyway, the point of this was to show off some shapes that have a similar style to each other. They're easy to visualize and remember, and as a result, can be replicated easily. Here's what we would achieve if we repeated the stuff above a few times. It becomes a pattern. Can you see the stairs now? We call the uppermost shape 3-1 stairs, the one in the middle 2-2 two -two stairs, and the bottom one 1-3 one stairs. This convention uses the number of base puyos and the number of key puyos. Next, we'll get into discussing how to extend these forms past two chains. We'll focus on 3 one stairs for now, since it's the one most commonly used, but note that the same applies for the other types of stairs too. Just like before, we'll focus on adding one link at a time, so let's start with a 2 chain. First off, we create the base, the vertical group of 3. We're going to do that here with these greens. Then we make the adjacent vertical group of 3. We're using reds for this one. And then, we add our key Puyo. That's the green on top of this red. Finally, we can set off our chain using the red. That one was our trigger. Now, for a 3 chain. We make the first group of 3 using these greens. Since we've placed the purple beside already, we'll use that as our color for the adjacent vertical group. Now we have to put the key Puyo in place, a green on top of our purples. We 
With that sorted, we add another group of three to keep extending our chain, which we'll accomplish with these blues. Lastly, we add our key puyo, a purple, on top of the blue, which completes the chain. All that's left to do is set off the chain, which is a three. You may notice that it would be difficult to achieve chains higher than 3 like this. There are a few things that can be applied to help you get there. Once you've gotten the hang of building 3 chains, you can start doing things out of order. For this, we need to make use of our good friend, the next window. Since we know how the end result of the form will look, we can set up our groups of 3 ahead of time, as long as we remember to fill in the key puyas later. By doing this, we can optimize the usage of our pairs. You may have been focusing on only using one colour from a pair at a time until now, but being able to make use of both at once is vital. With this in mind, let's step up to making a 4-chain. Right away, notice how we have a couple of blues and a lot of greens coming up. Remembering the structure of stairs, we're able to dedicate a column to a certain colour. In this case, from right to left, we have green, blue, then yellow. With this yellow-green, we can continue to build on our yellow column, but we also start a new column of greens beside it. Then, this double-green can be used to finish this column. We use the next few pieces to build out the right side of our chain. The placement of this yellow-blue is key. It allows us to finish our column of yellows, while also placing the blue key for you at the same time. It's very important to keep moves like this in mind, so that you can get the most out of each piece you place. These reds aren't looking useful, so we'll clear these out. With everything completed after placing this yellow Puyo, we can set off our chain. Let's look more closely at the process while building a 5 chain. Looking at our next window, based on the first two pieces, we can already decide that the green should be placed away from the wall. Why? Because if you place it on the wall, we won't be able to use both greens. After these two pieces have been placed, we use the next piece to continue our purples while setting up our yellows. Our next window indicates that we have yellows and blues coming up, so we can dedicate columns to those colours. Because this double purple is useless, we can throw it to the side, and while we're doing that, it gives us a chance to look at our next few pieces. We have a purple green, which lines up perfectly with the columns we've set up, and then a yellow purple. Think carefully, where should you place this? Column 3 is the answer. It completes the yellow and sets up our purple key for you. From here, it's just a matter of finishing off the links we've started. Remember to clear off the junk on top of your chain, or else your board will get too cluttered. One. Clearing the blues yields a 5 chain. Another thing that will help with achieving higher chains is knowing how to deal with pieces that don't seem very useful at all. Just like we did in the previous tutorial, one solution is to throw pieces to the side and clear them when necessary to avoid excessive clutter. However, another place where you can put unusable pieces is on the links you've already completed. For example, you can see here when I was building the 4 chain, we split the blue and red. While the blue was used to continue building the chain, the red was unusable, so we placed it aside on the greens since they're already finished. Similarly, we did it when placing this piece too. By placing the key puyo, we completed the column, so it was completely okay to have the blue on top. 
Another very good example is when we were building our 5 chain. While waiting for yellows, we had a bunch of unusable pieces. However, since we'd already completed the links in the middle, we could throw the garbage on top. It's important to clear away this junk when you can though, so that you can have more space to accommodate any more unusable pieces. It's important to only place junk on completed links though, otherwise you won't have space for your Kipuyo, like in this example. Be mindful of the placement of this blue-yellow. If we put the unusable yellow to the right, we'll block the position where the green Kipuyo is meant to go. It would have been better to keep the yellow above the blue we just placed as that link was just being completed. So, you can see that the extra pieces do not interfere with the chain, as long as the link they're being placed on is complete. Extending on this idea though, stairs does have another quirk. The key wheels do not actually need to be placed directly on top of the blocking colour. Think about how the blocking piece works. We have to shift this piece a few tiles up because the greens are so tall. But, we can use the height of these greens to our advantage. Note that this screen here drops directly onto the floor, so there's spaces above it where it could have been too. With this in mind, it's then possible to see that the Kipuyo can be placed a bit higher in the chain construction. In fact, it can be placed in any of the three spaces above the link that causes it to fall. And it doesn't have to be just one Kipuyo either. There's nothing stopping you from adding an extra one or two. This will make your chain stronger, especially if the extra Puyos are cleared at the end of your chain. This is useful knowledge not only when considering your own rubbish pieces, but also when thinking about garbage sent to your board by the opponent. As you can see, it may seem troublesome that the garbage is in the spot where you'd normally put your Kipuyo, but with this knowledge, you know that there's still space to do so. Here's an example where we make use of this knowledge. You can see that the 2 chain sent by the opponent was rather disruptive, but it's not too bad to work around. The bubble Kipuyu can still be placed on top of the garbage, and the green Kipuyu can as well. When clearing the chain, you'll see that they still reach the position that they need to be in for the chain to work. One other thing you can do is to mix the different kinds of stairs together. This can be useful if you're having trouble creating groups of three right away. Let's have a look at another example. Let's say we wanted to use this yellow red on the left side of our chain. It's nice since it helps with the red and yellow links, but the green isn't finished yet. That's okay though, because we can then treat the greens as two two stairs. Remember, you'll need two green keepers for the chain to work this way. We also need to be mindful that because of the placement of the yellow, we're going to have to treat it as two two stairs as well. When filling in the right side of our chain, we could still have it be a standard 3-1 stairs build too. Knowing you can switch between the forms of stairs will help you work around the RNG more consistently. And that's how you build stairs. An important point to mention here is that by now, you should understand the reason for why stairs works on a logical level. Following the template of a fixed form is useful to a certain extent, but without the intuition built through understanding the concept of how chains link together, you may find it very difficult to work around situations where you have to branch off from the standard, clean template. When first attempting stairs, make sure to keep the concepts of blocking in your mind. Then, once you have that down and are ready to tackle increasing your efficiency, it's okay to think about the end result stairs in order to best make use of your pieces. The best advice though, is to try it yourself. Practice, practice, practice. It won't be easy at first, but you'll get there.
Before moving on to the next video, it will be necessary to become confident with building 5 chain stairs using 3 1 stairs and 2 2 stairs. You may even be lucky enough to set up a 6 chain if you do something like this and get a lucky piece. That's all for this video. Remember, the key is practice. Don't worry if it takes a while to get it. I believe in you. And I'll see you all in the next video.